Hello and welcome to SJP Advisor Stories. In this series, we interview SJP partners and advisors to share their real life experiences. I'm your host, G Fitit. And if you have any questions that you would like to ask an SJP partner or advisor, please feel free to comment below or reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. I'm delighted to be joined by Karen Beresford, one of our senior partners. Karen, welcome. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us how long you've been at SJP? So, uh, yeah, I'm a partner, um, a senior partner um, based in Longmont Street in the city. And I joined St. James's Place back in September 2009. Wow, so some time ago. And I heard that that was on one of our academy pilots. So you were one of the the test people to go through the programme. Yeah, I was actually. So I think, uh, yeah, the original academy started and I think we were number four. I think there were a couple of intakes a year. So we were the sort of fourth intake. But Fantastic. Yeah, and I was I was introduced actually by um, an SGP partner who actually, I was a client of his at the time, um, working at JP Morgan and not really enjoying it for various reasons. And, and he started talking to me about SGP and he said, well, have you... Have you looked at joining SJP? And I said, well, no. And he introduced me to the Academy. Fun. And that's how I heard about it. Oh, I love that. So you're already yeah. a client. And yeah, I was a client. A little bit dissatis- dissatisfied in your job. Which yeah. I'm sure people in the audience will be resonating with that. Yeah. So we can cover that in just a moment. Yeah. So what I have here, Karen, is a list of the most frequently asked questions that we get throughout our event. Because I know the people watching are going to want to ask you some things. So I'm going to ask okay. on their behalf. And by the way, if you are watching this online, please do type some questions in the Q&A box for us. So how long ago you got into the profession was 2009. What were you doing before you were working at JP Morgan? What were the things that you were dissatisfied about in your previous job? Yeah, so I, I joined JP Morgan as a graduate on the graduate training program and started off. Um, so I did a short period working, well, no, about, about three years actually working on the equity derivatives trading floor, which was fabulous. Really enjoyed it. But just felt I didn't want to do that as a full, as a career. I didn't want to become a trader. And I ended up moving to JP Morgan Asset Management and finally to JP Morgan Private Bank on the investment side. Um, and it was really just working crazy long hours for a big American bank. Wow. And it was kind of fine when you were young. And then I had my first daughter, was still being, you know, called at all sorts of times and working long hours. And just started thinking, this isn't how I want my life to be. Uh, I wasn't seeing her at all, um, you know, and just suddenly thinking, actually, I want a bit more control over my work-life balance and control of my own destiny a bit more. So when you were speaking to your existing advisor then about potentially joining SJP, what sorts of things were running through your mind? Was math something on your mind, thinking I've got to be brilliant at math being an advisor? (laughs) No, not at all. No, that was probably the furthest thing I thought. No, I mean, I would definitely not say I'm brilliant at maths. I mean, you know, frankly, we all have a calculator these days. I think you need to be um, comfortable working with numbers is what I would say. You know, obviously not scared of numbers, happily working with numbers. But, you know, you don't have to be, uh, I didn't do A-level maths. And, you know, you definitely don't have to be brilliant at maths. That is good news. So let's take it back a step then. And just make it really clear exactly what is it that a financial advisor does? Not what you do day to day, but what does a financial advisor do? I guess uh, it's at, I mean, at the basic level, it's helping people improve their financial circumstances. So, and actually, there's a lot about just helping people discover what their goals are and what their priorities are. And they might not think it has anything to do with finance. So it's really just about open questions, starting to get them to think, well, what are their goals and aspirations for them and their family? And then, of course, most things do end up interplaying into financials. And and then you end up discussing, well, what do we need to do now to try and help make those dreams and plans a reality? And it might be about retirement. It might be just about traveling or it might whatever way they want to spend their money or You know, so that's really, I suppose, the heart of it, helping people improve their financial well-being. Fantastic. So a really meaningful role. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I genuinely do think I add value to my clients. And I've seen that over the last 13 years of how I have actually improved people's finances. And they are really grateful, you know. I guess it gives people peace of mind. Is that what yeah. things you feel like you give people? Yeah, completely. Yeah. yeah, that's often what I get. It's just someone... Someone they can talk to, they can really discuss, yeah, all aspects of their finances, having peace of mind, also having a plan. Like people say, do you know, I just feel like I've got a plan now. I've got everything in order. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm focused on. We're reviewing that plan. 
you know, and uh, yeah, I guess that's the part of it. Fantastic. So let's think about then what do you get involved with day to day? Because the overarching role of a financial advisor sounds fantastic, but what does that mean on a day day to day? Yeah. Yeah, I was giving this some thought. I mean, it's, uh, I suppose the the bulk of what I do is interacting with clients, whether it's over the phone, over email or in meetings. Um, and then, and then around that, you've obviously got the preparation for the meetings. So, you know, you might be pulling off their, you know, financial details, their plans, uh, having a look at the performance. So preparing for the meeting and then obviously post meeting, you're doing all the follow up that might have come from that. Um, you might be, you know, booking some business. You might be writing a suitability letter confirming what our advice is. Um, so there's a bit of administration. Obviously, as you progress in St. James's Place, you can hire people to work within your practice to help you with all of that administration. So, okay. you know, the goal is that I spend most of my time speaking to clients and dealing with clients and less time doing admin. But obviously, in the early days at the beginning, I did everything. You know, sure. you, you have to know how to do everything, but hopefully you delegate over time. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, now, this question is really commonly asked predominantly by a lot of our female viewers. Um, and you mentioned you you have, a, how many daughters do you have or children? I've have? got two daughters who are now uh, 12 and 14. So as I think I said, I had one of them just before I joined. Okay. And then a couple of years later, so fairly early on in my career with St. James's Place, I actually had my second daughter. Okay. And so, so how, so two, <laughs> I've got two questions off the back of that then. How did you manage the retraining and in the yeah. career with a, with a young family? Yeah. And then the second question after that is how flexible is the career or has it been for you as a, as a parent? So how did I manage it? I mean, you know, just determination. And I think, I think you can put your mind to anything if you really want to do it. So I just, you know, found time in my day. I used to sort of say to my husband on a, you know, Saturday morning, right, I'm going off to the library or a coffee shop for two hours to study or to, you know, do some preparation for, for SJP. I mean, in the beginning it was studying to pass the exam. So it's just about carving out time, whether it's an evening or a couple of hours during the day, or I think you can juggle it. You can find the time. Uh, it helps if you've got some support, whether it's your husband or family or, you know, or a nanny or whatever you might have to help you. So I guess that's how I juggled that transition and with young kids, you know, I mean, and what was the second question? How do I... How flexible has the career oh, yeah. been over time? Oh, amazingly. I mean, that was one of my big drivers for doing it is because when you work for a, a you know a big firm or a corporate firm, it's very difficult to take time out to go to a school sports day or to a you know, Christmas nativity play or whatever it might be. Um, whereas doing this job, you can juggle it around your family. I mean, I always say it's not, uh, I work just as hard as I worked when I worked at JP Morgan, but I do it on my own terms. So I choose, if I want to take the afternoon off to go to a sports day, I might choose to work in the evening instead. Um, but, you know, that's your choice. You can juggle it. And it, so it is completely, really flexible. I think it's the best job in the world to be a working mum. Fantastic. Because you've got that flexibility. And my next question was going to be, what do you love about your job? And it might be the flexibility, but you know something else. Oh, well, I mean, there's lots of things. Um, yeah, the flexibility is, is great. Um, I think being in control of your own destiny. For me, that was the big thing is that, you know, your, I know we'll probably talk about earnings, but your, you know, your earnings are uncapped. You, you can decide how hard you work um, and what rewards come from that. Uh, which is so liberating, you know, compared to any other job where you're employed and you're, you know, at the you know at JP Morgan you're at the mercy of whatever they decide bonus they decide to pay, and it could if the bank has a bad year that nobody gets a bonus or, you know, as this job it's very directly correlated to the work you put in. Um, yeah, and and again back to kind of feeling like you're actually adding value on a day to day basis, you know, helping people improve their financial well being, which is is quite rewarding really rewarding. you know I mean it's not the same as saving someone's life medically but it does feel rewarding absolutely as, as we said before I think providing that security for clients peace of mind yeah is extremely yeah it's no, good so this is a really common question and it's you might have to think back a few years but it's where did you get your first clients from how did that work yeah. for you so I that was the big thing I was worried about actually I was like well how am I going to get any clients you know <laughs> And um, we, there's, there's lots of great training that comes through when you're on the academy. I mean, that's one of the benefits of coming through the academy. 
SJP, you know, you get to talk to a lot of people, listen to people about how they did it. I basically just targeted my personal network of connections and I focused a lot on ex-colleagues um, that I worked with at JP Morgan and then also used my friends network, my all personal networks that I could think of. I just started to talk to people about what I was now doing at St. James's Place and just talked passionately about it. And it's amazing how you discover people that do have a need. And I think because we cover such a wide variety of, of things, whether it's investments, pensions, inheritance tax planning, you know, protection, there's always a need. Most people have some that triggers some sort of need for a discussion. So I was, I found that actually just using my personal connect network really worked. Definitely. So, and I think some people actually may think, well, I didn't work at JP Morgan. Where are my clients going to come from? But it but doesn't actually, matter. Yeah. You know? I mean, you, it doesn't matter where people work. If you've, if you've worked, you might have pensions from previous employment or, you know, there's all sorts of things that you, people have a need for financial advice. But what I love about your answer was you, you tapped into what was relevant for you. So we have people joining yeah. us from the military, often sports professionals, and actually those people find a niche within their previous life. Mm. and helping those people because they understand the challenges that those people have. Yeah. So it doesn't matter exactly. what the background is. Yeah. It's just be brave and have those conversations with people is the advice. Fantastic. Um, so thinking about now then, you're sort of 10, 12 years in, where do, what's the percentage of clients that come from that sort of networking or referrals? How does that look good today? So 100% referral. Wow. So I don't, I mean, to be honest, I've never really done any marketing. It's all been referrals which is such a lovely way to build your business because every time you get one, I still get a complete buzz every time I get a referral because I just think, wow, someone's taken the trouble to actually think I've done a good job and refer me, you know. So it's all referrals, yeah, which is really, it is a very nice way to build your business. Um, Fantastic. And so the yeah. future is bright for people thinking this could be quite difficult in the beginning, but actually if you're doing a good job, people will recommend you. Yeah, people you. will recommend you, yeah. Definitely. Really good to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so somebody's asked, or typically people get worried about dealing with difficult clients. Is that something you, you come across often? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about this question. I think there's a sort of self-selection process that goes on because when you meet a client for the first time, generally, if they want to work with you and you want to work with them, you know, there's obviously a connection there. And, and obviously the clients that I work with probably completely different to clients other SJP partners work with. But so I suppose you, I was thinking about it and I genuinely consider most of my clients friends. I mean, I really enjoy it and I look forward to meeting with them. So I was thinking, well, how is that? But I think it is that natural selection. You know, I guess if they didn't get on with you, they may never become a client. And equally, if I had a meeting with someone, I really just thought this isn't, you know, I just don't think this is going to work. We're not, you know, we're not gelling for whatever reason. You know, I would probably slightly walk away. So yeah, no, I um, I don't really have any difficult clients. I mean, there's, you know, there are occasions where people might have, something might happen, there might be a mistake in our system somewhere or something happens. But generally, if you pick up the phone, speak to people, you know, most people are human. And no, I don't really have any difficult clients. <laughs> also very good to hear. So yeah, very good to hear. <laughs> um, okay, so you mentioned earlier on about financial rewards. Um, so um, I think it'd be really good for people listening today to understand maybe what it's like at the beginning and then obviously what they can look forward to in their future with with yeah. the service you are today i mean it's definitely quite tough at the beginning because you're self-employed yeah um, generally I, I mean i know um, some people join and go into work in practices as advisors and you know it might be a combination of salary and and but a lot of people it's self-employed and that was my situation and so you're building a business from scratch so you know, that's not to be uh, taken lightly. And I think the difficult thing is the volatility of earnings. So if you're used to having a salary and you know how much you're going to get paid each month, that's very simple. And suddenly you go into this world where you don't know how much you're going to get paid each month. And there's a bit of a lead time between seeing a client and then maybe writing some business. So, so it's that volatility that's tricky. Uh, it helps if you've obviously got some savings in the bank or you've got somebody else bringing income into the household or that you can kind of share some of that responsibility but <clears throat> you you know you have to be th thinking about that ahead of joining um and planning how you're gonna having enough income for the first i don't know 12 months i, I don't know what guidance you tend to give people but 
Yeah. I think that's really sensible advice. And, mm. and during our selection process, we'll speak to people about their personal circumstances. And that's very much a big part of the decision making. And there is financial support from SJP too. So it's yeah. getting the full picture. What's your personal circumstances? Yeah. How do we support you? With both those things added together, do we feel like this is a viable opportunity for you over the next 12 months without being stressed? Yeah. Yeah. So, but then, uh, I mean, the brilliant thing is then, you know, once it takes off and you start, you know, getting clients, uh, the earnings are uncapped. I know I've said that before, but it's just so powerful. And I still just think it's, you know, so if you work really hard and you do a great job for your clients, your earnings are uncapped, you know, and, and you can, I mean, I definitely earn a lot more than I earned when I was at JP Morgan. And, wow. But I've got the most amazing work-life balance and flexibility, which I think is just the perfect scenario, really. <laughs> so uh, hence why I love it. Yeah. Fantastic. So let's think about SJP then and how how SJP support you and your business. You mentioned before you want to ideally spend as much of your time in front of clients as possible. So yeah. how do SJP help your business in that way? Um, in so many ways. I mean, I suppose uh, everybody gets assigned a business development manager. So uh, whatever stage you're at, whether you're coming out of the academy, we're in the academy, coming out. And even myself, 10 years in, I have somebody from SJP sort of management team that I can sit down with on a regular basis, talk about my business, talk about any help that I might need or issues that I'm coming across. So that's really, really helpful. And then there's all manner of support. So whether it's the technical helplines where you can call up, whether you've, you know, a technical question about pensions or inheritance tax planning or trusts or something you haven't come across every day and you can talk it through um, with an expert or there's amazing support for uh, training, exams, continuous professional development. I uh, have done my chartered level exams and SJP provide all the courses and support to help you do that. So that is something that's really different and I think really sets and domes the space out, you know, compared to other competitors in the in that space. So yes, yeah, so many ways. Legal, you know, with support for running your practice, HR support, legal support, you know, anything you possibly need, there's somebody at St. James's Place head office that can probably help you. I love that. And sometimes I describe it as the best of both worlds because you have the autonomy of running your own business, but there's absolutely 100 business behind you. Yeah. So you feel that support. Definitely. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay. This is going to be a tough question for you because you've been running your business for over a decade. But what's one of the best moments of being a financial advisor for you? Yeah, this is a hard one. I was trying to think. I mean, I, one that came to mind was, um, and it's all to do with client circumstances. This one was a lady that I'd recommended some protection for um, and quite a while back, you know, sort of five, six years previously. And she took out some critical illness cover. And then sadly, she discovered that she had breast cancer. And we had a meeting and during the meeting, I I was thinking, well, I was thinking in the back of my mind, oh, she's got critical illness cover. But I thought, well, I, I don't want to bring it up, you know, because that's not going to solve the situation. But at the end of the meeting, I said, just you do remember that you've got the critical illness cover. And she'd completely forgotten that she had it. And, you know, of course, it didn't it didn't detract from the fact she had breast cancer, but it massively helped their finances. And she ended up recovering and she's made a full recovery and she's paid off a huge chunk of her mortgage. But back to that peace of mind point, it gave her the peace of mind while everything was going on that she didn't have to worry financially. And that, you know, and it that's just one tiny example of so many examples of where you feel like you've added value. Wow. So that's the type of stuff that we do. <laughs> Makes it worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Um, so the last question is a bit of a flip on its head. If you weren't a financial oh, advisor, yeah. what, what else do you think you might have done? This is funny because I was trying to think of some really clever answer about something I might have done, <laughs> like, you know. But, um, well, I probably would have, you know, the honest answer was I probably would still be at JP Morgan working crazy long hours, having no work-life balance and wishing I was doing something else and not really doing it. Um, I've always been in finance. I've always been interested in finance. So I don't, I can't really think of anything I would rather be doing so it's not a very great answer to end on but, <laughs> yeah. but well look uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us i hope everybody at home has found that really really helpful and in our offices so thank you for listening and thank you karen for joining that's us. right my pleasure <laughs>